Today, we are gonna be making a jig to convert the 300ZX to use S13 front suspension. It's not that the 300ZX suspension is bad by any means, but it's just not ideal for the purpose I wanna build this car for. The Z32 utilizes an upper control arm, whereas the S13 just uses the shock itself as the upper pivot point. And that would be classified as a McPherson strut. So we have a few parts here that I'm gonna to use to make this jig. First off, we have an S14 subframe, S14 tension arms, S13 lower control arms, and I already took off the top hats for these S14 shocks, and the top hats are the same for S13 and S14. Now I found all of these S14 parts in the junkyard, subframe, tension arm brackets, tension arms, and coilovers. These S13 control arms were taken off of my 240. Now I mentioned in a previous video that if an S14 popped up for me to use to make this jig, then I would do it. And that just happened, so. Now we gotta load up all of our tools into the Z. I think I'll probably start with putting the welder in first since it's the biggest object. And just like that, we're in full work truck mode. All right, we have just arrived at Devin's house. He's not home right now, but he will be here shortly. This is the S14 that we're going to be using. It is actually the front half of an S14. And this is actually the same exact car that I took the subframe out of for my 240. This car was cut up because it was completely rotted out. The firewall wasn't even connected anymore. This is a perfect candidate to make a jig out of. The first thing I'll do is obviously unload the car and then we'll start attaching the stock pieces to this car. Well, do I call it a car? We'll call it a half cut. And then we'll try and weld it all in place so that nothing is able to move. This is about to be the strangest way I've ever put on a subframe to a car. Sideways. Looks like we already have some mounts on this side, but we're going to need to install these mounts on the other side. The steering rack goes towards the firewall, so tuck it this way. Big dummy move. I forgot my impact. I set it on the charger as I was packing up and forgot to grab it. So it's gonna take probably twice as long now. I did bring my bolt bin because I knew I was gonna need some additional hardware. Some of it spilled out, but that's all right. Let's start with this side. Slide the control arm in. This is just such a weird way to put a car together. It's kind of nice though. I'm not crawling under it, you know? Put this tension arm on. Let's see if this will line up. All right. Last but not least, we'll install the top hat. Now what we need to do is make a dummy shock. Basically just welding everything together. So our control arm and tension arm still have some play, right? So I brought these cylinders to weld in to the top hat and then attach it down here to the lower control arm. This doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to hold everything in place. That way when I bolt this up to the Z, I'll know exactly where the shock tower needs to be. And this is a little crusty, so we're gonna have to grind this smooth to bare metal. Same with the lower control arm. I flipped the control arm, the upper top head, and some metal. So I plan to use one straight beam to go in place of the shock, and then two little beams to basically reinforce the whole structure to make sure it's not wobbly. I want it to be as accurate as possible. So to start off, we'll use the thicker beam. You just put the ground right on it. base has been welded in. Now let's add this beam. I'm thinking maybe towards the inner side of the control arm and then we'll extend it out as far up as we can with this arm. I might have to grind the paint off the bottom of this control arm though. This is starting to look pretty cool. Let's throw on this little guy here. This one I wanted to attach to the top hat to make sure that that is not gonna flex on us. So I'll probably attach it in a similar way, just like this.
think this is gonna do the job. That's definitely not gonna be moving anytime soon. Nice and secure. Now let's just hope that we can actually get it off the car. We got the jig off and we went ahead and made the other side as well. Thank you, Devin, for helping me out and letting me use your stuff. You're welcome, bro. He also went ahead and took off his strut bar from one of his cars. That way I can easily align it when it's on the Z. It'll be a lot easier to use the top end to draw the holes too, once I have this bottom figured out. So, thanks again, dude. No problem. Thank Katie, because that's her strut bar. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> thanks, Katie. And there's so much more room for you. Now, I also had to pick up some stock front knuckles, and then Omar let me borrow some stock front shocks. But unfortunately, one of them is four lug, and the other knuckle is missing a bearing and the washer. I had a spare S14 washer, but unfortunately, it's not the same. So we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. But I am eager to mount the two new jigs onto the car and see how they fit. Because I honestly have no idea where these top hats are going to align. Basically, the whole point of making these jigs is to find out where the strut bar goes. I may even need to cut out some of the shock tower to match the stock geometry for the S chassis. I guess we'll start by just jacking it up, popping the wheels off and taking off the Z suspension. The perks of this being a monster truck, jacking it up straight from the subframe. Well, now we can grab the impact that should be nicely fully charged. By the looks of it, we have a couple things going on here. We have the knuckle, the upper control arm, and then the shock itself. We need to remove all of these from the car as well as the stock tension arm and the lower control arm. Honestly, I might even have to remove the sway bar. I just realized that this reinforcement mount is probably in the way, creating more work for ourselves, but I did order new sway bar bushings, so we're gonna have to take these off anyways. We're also gonna have to remove the brake lines. There's not just one clip on these brake lines, there's not even two or three, but four. And it looks like we have an ABS line as well. We're gonna remove that because we are definitely not gonna be running ABS. And the more I look at this, the more this inner tie rod looks bent. Does that look bent to you? <laughs> what the heck? I wonder when that happened. Honestly, probably from the previous owner. I have not curbed yet in this car. <laughs> Hopefully ever, fingers crossed. I really hope that stage of life is over. The 240 has seen a few curbs. Unfortunately, gotta learn somehow. Let's remove the sway bar link. It's behind the knuckle. And it looks pretty crusty, so we're gonna have to fight it. Now I could disconnect the shock from the knuckle, but they all have to come off regardless. So I think instead what I'm gonna do is just unbolt the upper control arm and the top hat of the shock. I'm actually gonna do that step last. That way everything can hang for me while I take off the tension arm and the lower control arm. Free up this brake line. Oh, this one's encapsulated. You have to take off this whole bracket with it. These are dry rotted too. I need to order new brake lines. Oh, looks like the caliper can touch the ground because the brake line is long enough. Might as well take the rotor off. Now we can finally get a good view at this knuckle setup. Lower ball joint, upper ball joint on the bottom. I don't even know what this cap is for. Is there something under here? These just do not look pleasant to work on. All right, next let's get off the tension arm. Before I forget to do this step, I need to take off the outer tie rod. And these old crusty pins are really fun to get out of the castle nut. Success. Another thing I forgot to check in one of my previous videos when I was comparing control arms is if the tie rod end is the same taper from a Z32 to an S14 or S13. So we're gonna have to look into that as well down the line. So once you get the nut off, you wanna put it back on before you start beating on it. That way you don't accidentally damage the threads. Technically, you're really not supposed to smack knuckles that are aluminum, but I don't plan on running these anymore, so yeah. There we go, you got it. Yeah, that tie rod's definitely bent. These have an, oh, they have a washer on top? I guess that makes sense, it is aluminum. This lower control arm bolt was really tight, so I'm actually gonna slide a jack handle onto it, use it as a breaker bar. Uh, you wanna be careful that you don't smack your fender when you're going up. Ooh. 
The lower control arm bolt is on the left. Just good to take note of your hardware and what you're working with in case you get it mixed up. The tension arm bolt has a longer bevel on the inside versus the lower control arm. And we are free on the bottom. The plug is stuck. There we go. I'll probably start with taking off these bottom two upper control arm mount pieces just because these are the hardest to get to and that would suck to do last while everything is dangling on it. And last but not least, let's take off the shock. Wrong size. Watch your toes. It did not fall down like I thought it would. I guess it's still hanging on by these studs. Oh, there it goes. Man, this is so heavy. This thing looks wild. Spider webs. Let me take off this side of the sway bar. That's down enough, right? Quick little comparison. This is where we're gonna be mounting up. These are the holes we wanna drill for the top. And then this is the old stuff. So much going on here with this upper control arm mount, the control arm itself, the knuckle. We're gonna simplify the suspension a tremendous amount while probably reducing the weight by half. Let's compare our hardware first. I always keep it inside the control arm so I don't lose it. Lower control arm bolt. To the Z lower control arm bolt, same thing. This is the tension arm bolt from the S14. Same as the Z32. Now something that is different between these cars is the tension arm bracket, which is this little piece. This one is about half the length of the S14 one. Here's the S14 for scale. So now I'm running into some issues. I'm not able to seat this lower control arm bolt all the way, and that is because the shock tower won't slide forward enough to allow it. It keeps hitting this ridge here, which on the top it looks like this, a little indent. So I may just cut a sliver in it, just so that way I can hammer it up enough to allow it to slide forward. I will eventually have to cut out this entire piece here and weld a flat plate, that way the coilover can bolt to it securely. But just to line things up, I need to get the mounting holes correct, so I'm gonna have to make some decisions. I've hammered it to the point where it basically closed up that gap that we just grinded. So we definitely earned some space there. Let's remount the jig and try again. So I'm able to get the bolt all the way through to the point where it's peeking through. So not fully through. I don't want this to be forced, you know, I want it to fit nicely. And I'm thinking the next thing I need to do is actually trim back a piece of the top hat. I think the top hat is hitting the upper piece of the shock tower on the outside. And I think that's holding us up but we're definitely making progress. Now it actually fits in here nicely on the top. So I want to shave this down ever so slightly right on the edge here. This is the outer edge. All right, we are mounted. That is where it needs to be. I will mention also that we got the measurements directly spot on because when I measured this side, it matches identically to the other side. I've already installed this side, did the same line on top, hammered it up. Got it all installed and it's the same. It looks actually, it looks a little dark on the camera, but it matches up and I'm so hyped about that. Well, since the Z is down and that's my only car, I need to swap the rear wheels on the 240 because these bell sides do not hold air, unfortunately. Probably just put the XT7s back on. Smokes is gonna make me a plate to weld onto the shock tower to make sure that it's nice and secure. But until then, we'll drive the 240. Well, Smokes hit me up and he told me the plates are ready for pickup. Let's go see what they look like. Oh, looks like he's coming here. What is up, Smokes? What's up? Dude, these are perfect. Yeah, they could have been better. No, they're, they're perfect. Thank you, man. No problem. Here's your crusty guy back. Yeah, some, thanks. He got some spiders in the back, too. I didn't know. Did it? Oh my gosh. I hope they didn't get all over your car. No, no, they're, they're good. They're all dead. I killed them with some brake clean. Did you? Yeah. Good. No spiders in this house. Hell no. Yeah, I literally just gave him a top hat and he came back with two plates. And Unreal. We're gonna get them welded. 
Yes, sir. I didn't drill the holes yet, but that's the easy part. That's, yeah, that will be the easy part. <laughs> this is gonna be fucking awesome. Yeah. Now let me know that the shock towers are in the correct location. I can finally make some marks on the inside here. Just outlining the hole that I need to drill out to the top. And it's gonna be difficult to do these. Hello. Now this is some thick metal. No wonder why these cars were two times as expensive as the S chassis, maybe more. They're two times the gauge at least. So now I can put this plate on top and outline the rest of what I need to cut out. Now I may have cut too much here, but that's no problem. I have enough excess metal that I can just use to fill that in. And then once I put the outline on top, I'll know the better way to cut it. Now I don't want to cut this exactly on this line and we do not want to create more work for ourselves than we have to. So I'm gonna cut just inside of that line. Well, I'm realizing I have ordered these plates a little too small. There's definitely not enough material to weld to here. I mean, even with a bolt in there, how am I gonna get the edge of this, you know what I mean? The bead is gonna overlap it and it's just not gonna sit nice. So I'm gonna to need to get another set of plates made. And this is my fault. I should have just known to get a bigger one. He actually suggested a bigger one at first, but I'll take full responsibility, full blame. In the meantime, let's go support a local shop. This is not a good place to be stopped, but I'm pulling in and look at the ground here. I don't think I can make it over this hump. It's even worse on the other side. We made it to Jarek's skate shop. I actually lost my skateboard recently, so gotta get another one. Gotta support the local. See if we still got it. Oh, we're still going. Tried so hard. Try to get it back. Mm. My board. Let's 
stuff. Joe, thanks for skating. Thanks for having me, boy. Killed it. Bond? Nope, I don't want to appear on camera. Thanks for filming. I don't appear on camera. Shy guy. <laughs> As much as I wanted to finish all the 300ZX stuff in one video, it's just not realistic. This video was honestly four separate days in the making, just filming alone. Plus, now that it's 2 a.m. on Saturday night, the day I'm going to release this video, I think I'm overworking myself just a little bit. But I'm going to do my best to put this video out on time. If I do not, I apologize. I'm trying my best. The Z is really kicking my butt. But thank you guys for sticking around. Don't forget to drop a like on the video. See you next time. Peace.